Nigel Farage, we have got a message for you. We are going to expose the realities of your new Brexit party. So basically, you are going to misinterpret and put out a false image of Nigel Farage to attack the Brexit party, completely ignoring the other candidates and supporters of the party who are perfectly legitimate and support perfectly logical ideals. We're going to make sure that you don't hijack patriotism and decency in this country. Well done, you've completely cut the video and the circumstances behind it. The person in question shouts, go home, you've lost, but you cut the you've lost bit because it didn't suit your agenda. Um, your candidate in the constituency during the European elections dismissed the Brexit vote and the Brexit party vote as being a harbinger to fascism, to be of fascism. The person in the audience reacted by shouting, go home, you've lost, i.e. go home to wherever you live, you've lost. There was no indication that it was racially motivated or that he was telling your candidate to go back to a country or whatever. It's pathetic and you've just deliberately cut what was said. Party is a far-right party, as far as I'm concerned, but we don't know their policies. All we know is that they stand for... You were the person who stood in front of extreme far right inspired posters. Yes, the breaking point poster, which used an image that was passed around by the BBC. And the Guardian newspaper before it was even used by UKIP at the time. The Breaking Point poster illustrates a legitimate issue, which is that over a million mostly economic migrants, according to the EU's own data, have come into Europe and will be eligible for passports within six to eight years. These are European Union passports that will give them access to the United Kingdom. Now, if you look at the period of time between the common market referendum in 1975 and the 2016 EU referendum, you have to look at the long-term outlook of our membership of the EU because it's likely we won't get another referendum, if ever, for at least 40 years. So the question has to be asked, how many people will be coming to the UK over the next 10 years and what impact will that have on our services and infrastructure? perfectly logical question and a perfectly logical poster that was spanned by people like you to suit an agenda. You were the person who said that you'd be worried if Romanians moved in What's next door to you. Difference and you know what the difference is. No, I honestly... At the time, Nigel Farage had two young daughters living with him in a three-bedroom semi in a leafy suburb. Would you not be concerned if a large group of males of any religion or nationality moved in next to you? Without explanation, a large group of men moving into a three-bedroom, semi-detached house somewhere. And you had two young daughters. I think you would be concerned. And that's the point he was making. You, don't. you were the person who said the army should be sent into migrant camp. At the time in which he said that, i.e. the Calais migrant camp, which was known as the jungle, young girls under the age of 18 were going missing. Many of them have, were being incorporated into child sex trafficking rings. People were being raped, abused, assaulted in the camp. And there was no police action taking place. Frodge suggested it might be a good idea to send in soldiers to maintain order. 
perfectly logical or would you prefer young children were sexually abused by people? It would be interesting to know the answer to that. You're the person who said breastfeeding mothers should be made to go and sit in the corner. Some people feel very embarrassed. He didn't say anything of the sort. He said that people who were breastfeeding might feel more comfortable if they had some privacy and that if you're going into an expensive restaurant it would be unusual to be confronted essentially by somebody who is breastfeeding in the middle of that restaurant. He said it would be more comfortable for a person to have that privacy and he even went on to say that it might be a good thing to have a separate room whereby a person can comfortably breastfeed with some privacy without having to do anything as ridiculous as having to do it in a bathroom or toilet. You were the person who's made friends with racists and bigots from America right the way across Europe. Well, Mr Orban, thank God there's at least one European leader prepared to stand up for his culture and his people. So to clarify, you've just dismissed 63 million people in the USA who voted for Donald Trump and 3 million people in Hungary who voted for Viktor Orban as being racists and far right. That's a really, really clever way of fostering international cooperation and cohesion. I'm guessing this is Labour Party attitude and policy to condescend to people and look down at people and tell them that they're wrong. Well, our party has been stopping people like you for generations. Your party is encouraging a stream of extremism and extremist rhetoric and ideology into the mainstream political fold in this country. This morning, you elected a woman to Parliament in Peterborough who has frequented Facebook groups and liked anti-Semitic comments highlighting things like Zionist slave masters and aligning that to Theresa May and joining Facebook groups who call on members of the public to go out and stab Jews. Your party is currently being investigated by the Human Rights Commission for systematic anti-Semitism, and you have the cheek to talk about your party keeping extremists out of politics. You don't have a clue. My grandfather fought against Oswald Mosley. My dad was arrested fighting against apartheid in the 1960s. Ours was the region that faced down Enoch Powell. And now you have a leader who likes anti-Semitic murals and looks over councillors and MP candidates who are openly anti-Semitic. Your party leader is as close to Nazism in the mainstream fold of politics that this country has seen since 1945. Your party leader encourages anti-Semitism, makes people feel less comfortable to be in this country. In fact, since he's become leader, the number of Jewish people leaving this country to move to Israel due to being made to feel uncomfortable has massively increased. And you have the cheek to talk about others in this context. How dare you? The Labour Party has driven out of politics the National Front, the BNP, the EDL, Britain First and UKIP. Your party has welcomed former BNP councillors. Your party is the only party in British politics to have welcomed in a councillor who was a former neo-Nazi. She was a second in command of the neo-Nazi league in Milton Keynes. Your party openly accepts extremists. In the last two years, your party has accepted members from the Communist Party of Great Britain. And you talk about opposing extremism? The Brexit Party have just elected, or had elected, MEPs from an ethnic minority background and foreign-born MEPs. In fact, a larger number of foreign-born MEPs and BME MEPs than the Labour Party had a a elected. And we will drive you out of politics. Drive you out of politics. 
That sounds like a threat. I thought you were trying to paint a scenario whereby the Labour Party and yourself weren't extremists. But you're going to drive people out of politics who hold different opinions to your own. That's pretty close to fascism territory, that is. Two. We will drive you out because we know something that Joe Cox taught us to be true. So you are abusing the memory of Joe Cox for political gain. You really are despicable. You really, really are despicable. If Jo Cox was still alive, she would be ashamed at what the Labour Party has become. She would be ashamed at the rampant anti-Semitism which led to one of your MPs leaving the party. You are a disgrace. Your party is a disgrace. Your party is encouraging real racism. I see it on a daily basis. I witness it on a daily basis. I had comments sent to me earlier today who denied that anti-Semitism even existed within the Labour Party and that it was just a Zionist conspiracy. IHRA definition of anti-Semitism repeatedly paints people within the Labour Party as anti-Semites and your party does nothing to confront this. more in common than anything which divides us and we're going to build our region around those ideals and drive you into history you have the cheek to suggest you are going to make a better country at a time when your party is encouraging widespread intolerance towards the jewish community you just don't know what you're talking about do you or are you just ignoring the fact that your party is openly encouraging anti-Semitism. That your party is repeatedly having anti-Semitic members reported to you. And you just ignore it. it. It staggers me that you can go online with videos like this. Accusing your opponents of extremism. And you're only highlighting one individual. On less than flimsy terms. You haven't highlighted anybody else in the party. You're just going to stereotype the entire party and everybody that supports it because that's what you are. You are an extremist. You are a bigot and you are intolerant.